Okay. 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 When anyone approaches my home, this screen automatically pops up four different cameras from around my home. I can see what the individual's doing. Plus, I get multiple viewpoints and I can see if anything else is going on. I can also control how long this stays up on the screen. It's really easy to set up today. So let me show you how we do this today, how you can extend this to things like doorbell presses or other events happening around your home. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and my goal on the channel is to help you save time and money on your journey to live smarter. So if you like that idea, hit the subscribe button now. But let's get back to this. It's a very simple setup and it just takes a few pieces of work inside an app and the setup of a couple of smart products in your home to make this happen. The first and biggest component of all of this is the new Amazon Echo Hub or an Amazon Echo Show 8, 10, or 15. You can do this with the Echo Show 5 too, but you'll see two cameras instead of four. Now, personally, I like the look of the Echo Hub over the Echo Shows just because of how the display uh, looks and how it views the cameras. And in today's video, I'll mostly be talking about doing this from the perspective of the new Echo Hub, but I'll explain the differences between using an Echo Show versus the Echo Hub as we go. The Echo Hub is an 8-inch touchscreen smart display. It has Amazon's voice assistant on board, so it's a lot like an Echo Show. You can ask it to do all kinds of things, but the feature that matters to us today is that you can ask it to open multi-view. So I know we're on the homepage and it's very bright, but all I have to say is open multi-view. That's the command that you use to bring it up manually. But don't worry, that's not what you're going to have to do if someone's outside of your home. You can also use the command, show me my cameras with your Echo Hub or your Echo Shows. Show me my cameras. I'll explain more later how we can uh, use additional commands to really customize what cameras show up on our display and how they show up. Because you can see certain ones are not even plugged in right now. The other thing you'll need are a number of smart cameras that connect with Amazon's voice assistant application. Now, I try not to say that wake word so I don't turn on a bunch of smart speakers in your home, but that app allows you to connect a number of different cameras from many camera makers and then you can display those on your Echo Hub and other devices like Echo Shows. I'll give you some advice for cameras that work really well with this system but if you have a question you can always ask in the comments below if I have experience with them I'll tell you plus there's other people here on Automate Your Life that probably have tried the cameras you want to ask about. We're not going to go through the full setup of your smart home cameras or the Echo Hub. We have videos for those kinds of things in the description below. Although, because there are so many different cameras out there today that work with Amazon, I don't have videos for setting up a ton of those. So right now, before I go into setup, I'm going to assume a few things of what you've done. It's very dangerous for any sort of tutorial video, but I'm going to assume that you have an Amazon Echo Hub or an Echo Show and that you've gone through the very basic setup process of getting that connected to Amazon's app and set up in your home. Now, if you haven't, you can see our full guide for that device in the description below. I'm also going to assume that you've set up a number of smart home cameras in their respective manufacturer's apps. So if you have cameras from Ring, they're set up in that app. If you have cameras from Tapo, like these, or Wise, or Nest, or another maker, they have to be set up in that app. And I'll mention that you can have cameras from many different manufacturers uh, all working and showing up on multi-view together. So, you know, this is Google Home. This is Tapo. I can get these cameras in. You can have Ring and Wise and many other cameras 
that can all work together pretty well. Now, if you have those two things done, then we can connect the cameras to Amazon's application by going into the skills and game store. You can also add these cameras by going to the devices page and hitting the little plus and hitting uh, the add device. But for now, I'm gonna show you how to do this through the more page and going into skills and games. Now, what you'll do is you'll search for the name of your camera's manufacturer. Then what you're going to do, tap into that and hit enable to use the skill. So then you're gonna put in the credentials to your app for that manufacturer. What will happen at that point is that Amazon will search through your account and pull in the cameras from that manufacturer. Then you'll have access to see those cameras on your smart display in a lot of cases, and therefore can include them in this multi-view setup. You'll go through a little bit of a process. You can see I've already added my cameras in, but you'll get a chance to name the cameras, and then if you'd like, you can place them into a group. But there are two components to each camera that you own that will drive how much they can be included in this. The first is whether or not they can be displayed at all. And the second component is whether or not they can start the automation that displays all of these different cameras. Now, the way to tell if a camera can be displayed on your Echo Hub is just to take the name that you got from adding it into Amazon's application and simply ask Amazon's assistant to display the camera. Show front pro cam. Okay. So there you go. If it does that, it's going to be capable of showing up in multi-view. Now, it's a little trickier to get cameras that can do the second part of what we need. This is where you're gonna head into uh, the routine section in Amazon's app. You'll find that under more, then you'll find routines right here. Then let's pretend we're creating a new routine. So you just hit the plus up in the top right. And honestly, we're gonna need to create a few routines to make this all happen seamlessly. What we're going to do is go into the when section. So when this happens, we're gonna hit the plus there. This is the event that starts everything. It's the trigger of our automation and it's how we make the whole thing happen without our intervention. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll through the set of smart home devices you have. You're going to be looking for the name of your camera. When you select the name of your camera, you're gonna get a few options in most cases. I'll tell you, the type of camera you want most of the time is one that can do person detection. You can research all kinds of cameras that do it well, but obviously Ring is gonna work fairly well with Amazon, but I've also had good success with these cameras from Tapo, and Google and their Nest products have always been fairly good at doing person detection. However, you could see that Ring is requiring a subscription in order to do this person detection, and so will Google with any of their cameras. The Nest video doorbell is only gonna do doorbell or motion detection. So you want access to that person detection trigger. And the really special thing with these Tapo cameras versus some of those other ones is that it doesn't require a subscription in order to do person detection. And they tend to react very quickly. I'll include links to all of the cameras that I have today that can do person detection. And I'll also include whether or not they require a subscription to do that. That's down in the description. Uh, go and review the different cameras, but I do really love these ones from Tapo. Their feed pops up really quickly on my display, and you also have some additional options for recording the events from them. You know, some of those options are happening in your home, and when it's that case, when it's happening and it's recording in your home, you won't have a subscription there either. So. These are kind of free to operate after you've bought them. Now, once you've selected your camera and the event you would like to use for triggering this multi-view to show up on your Echo Hub, then what we'll do is create an action. It will be a custom one. So that's what you're gonna pick. And then you're gonna type in open multi-view. Now, at that point, 
you're going to have to select the device that this will come through. So here you're gonna to wanna to choose your Amazon Echo Hub, whatever you've named that Echo Hub. Now, anytime your camera sees a person or depending on if you chose sees motion or another event, then that multi-view will pop up on your Echo Hub. Now, one problem that arises when we do this is that there's a timeout when you display cameras on Echo Shows or the Echo Hub. You've probably been noticing that the camera feed turns off or that multi-view turns off and it goes back to the home page. So lots of cameras will keep their feed up on the screen for five minutes. But that timeline can change based on many factors, including the maker of your camera or in the future. Amazon could make changes to how long they display cameras for. They could make all kinds of changes that could mess with your setup. So we need to be able to control this and we need to be able to make this routine work perfectly for us. So let's talk about perfecting this setup. You might have your Echo Hub in your bedroom. Maybe you don't want to have that screen showing anything in the middle of the night because it'll wake you up. So we're gonna add in some time conditions to our routine. Tap in right here and the first thing you're going to want to look at are the days and then you know if you don't want any of those days to to have this routine run you can uncheck them and then you can change the active time now i don't want this happening anytime after 11 pm and i don't want it happening anytime before uh, 6 a.m because quite frankly, I wanna sleep during those times. But the other thing that might be really good to do is to change the frequency that this can run. And there's a little bit of a consideration here for how long you want the cameras to remain on screen for. If you want them to remain on screen for five minutes, change this suppression to five minutes or at least five minutes, then the routine won't run again and again and again if someone keeps walking up and down your driveway. You know, I don't wanna hear the display tell me that it's bringing up that multi-view. Uh, oftentimes, all the display says is okay, but that's kind of weird in the middle of the day. Now, you might be okay with that, but what I like to do is I like to put in these volume commands. So I'll take the volume to zero, and then I'll drag that just above where I ask it to open multi-view. And then I'll add another one, send it back to whatever volume I'd like. And I'll put that after we open the multi-view. So that just means that I don't hear the display say, okay. I know one of the biggest requests is going to be that you want to keep the cameras on screen for a longer time, or you might want to shorten that time. I have another video that showed you how to do this way back when, when it was much tougher to do. And this was one of the biggest asks. So what you do is you test how long your cameras stay up on screen in that multi-view. Walk in front of one of your cameras, get this routine to run, then see how long multi-view stays up on your screen. If you're finding it's just two minutes, cause that's what Amazon has set, you'd like to extend that, then what you do with your routine is you wait for those two minutes. You'll find wait at the bottom and you can set that to whatever time frame you would like. So if we're going to do it for two minutes, we'll place that in and then we'll request it to open multi view again. So we'll create another action. Now you can see that we've set the volume to zero, we've opened multi-view, we set the volume back to five, and we waited two minutes, and then I asked it to open multi-view again. Now, I would probably do another set of volume to zeros, volume to five around that as well. Then again, you're gonna do the exact same pattern as you did above. So for me, I waited two minutes, I set the volume to zero again, I did another custom command of open multi view, and then I set the volume back to five. And if you'd like, you can continue this pattern again and again and again. So just follow that uh, as many times as you would like to keep the camera up. Then multi view will turn off for a couple seconds and come back up. 
that's how it'll work. So you could reduce the wait time if you'd like by a few seconds to make sure that multi-view doesn't go away for very long, but I think you get the point. It's not perfect because that will mean the four camera view comes up on screen a few times and you have to reload the camera feeds, but that is the best we can do today. But let's say that the multi-view is staying up for too long and you find you only want to look at this for about a minute. I'm going to get rid of all of these other actions and then we're going to change this so that we only have the camera up there for as long as we'd like. So again, I have my set volume to zero, open the multi-view, set volume to five, but let's say I only want it up there for a minute. What we're gonna do is add another action where we wait for just that one minute, and I'm gonna add that. And now, all I'm going to do is put in another custom command, and all it says is go home. What this will do is it will send the Echo Hub display back to the home page, back to the main page after that one minute. Now once you have this base routine, it's all set up, you like the way it works in your home, then you're going to want to recreate this for your other cameras. You're probably going to have a few since you want to bring up the multi-view and Therefore, you've got to make at least four routines, maybe more. So that's where you want to build your first one, and then you can create copies of this routine. So you can see, I just hit those three dots up at the top, and you can see copy actions to new routine. Now all I have to do is pick the camera and pick the event that I would like to also have that multi-view come up in the same manner. So if I wanted to pick my Tapo back camera, now I can do person detection there, I can hit save, and now I have this same routine, exactly the same as my first one, to show me when someone comes up to my home, and it's gonna show me for just a minute. You can go through and create multiples of that routine. But another perfection of this routine is if you use devices that are gonna be faster to react to someone being around your home. So I have this outdoor motion sensor from Philips Hue, and actually I've had a few different outdoor motion sensors in the past. It's important to use outdoor ones because they don't react to changing sun conditions like the indoor version of motion sensors will. Now both of the ones that I've linked below will require a smart home hub, and the Philips Hue one works with their Philips Hue Bridge hub. And Philips Hue can be integrated uh, into Amazon and just the same way as your cameras were coming into Amazon's app. But when that motion detector, that outdoor motion detector, it sees motion, I can use that to start this same routine. And honestly, it's gonna respond a little bit faster than most of the cameras can today. You might also want to use this kind of a routine if someone has pressed your video doorbell. And some video doorbells, like my Nest one, they allow you to do motion detection or sometimes people detection with companies like Ring. But it's really easy to adapt this to someone coming up, pressing the button on your smart video doorbell, and therefore turning on this display to the multi-view uh, so you can see who's at the door before you go and answer it. One of the biggest things we haven't addressed is how to control which cameras are popping up on your screen. You might want to get specific cameras to be displayed, like this one's not even plugged in right now. So we need to do something different. Now, it's important to note that I've been showing open multi-view as the custom command for all this, but you can also use the command to show me my cameras. And that was actually the older way to bring things up on your Echo Shows. But it leads us to a new way to control this. The problem is, when you tap on this screen, it says recently active cameras, and there's not really a clear indication from Amazon on how to choose uh, which 
of these cameras are popping up here. I've seen it be affected by, you know, just plugging in a camera. I've seen it be affected by making modifications in the application. I've seen it be affected by people walking in front of it. It's all over the place. It's just recently active. So we want to control that. Every camera in your home can be placed into multiple groups in Amazon's app. If you head to the devices tab, then you can see the different groups that you've already created in the application. If you haven't created any, there will be none here. You'll have to hit this plus, hit add group. You could start creating groups too right now, but we can put all of our cameras into multiple groups inside of the application. So it's not just one. Tapping into any of those groups, for example, our garage group, we get an edit button up here in the top right. This allows you to choose the devices that are in this group. Now, you can choose your Echo Shows. They have cameras on them. They're not gonna show up in multi-view right now. I'm not sure why, but you can try that out and see if it works today for you. Otherwise, we can go through and pick our different cameras. Now, obviously, if you're using an Echo Show 8, 10, 15, or the Echo Hub, then you can pick exactly four cameras, and those are the four cameras that will show up. So choose those and then hit save. Then the command I'm going to use in my routine is a little different than uh, open multi view or uh, show me my cameras. It's going to be show me my garage cameras, where garage is the name of the group. So I'm just going to hit finish on this routine. And just so you can see, I'm going to hit so it plays the actions. And you're going to notice things are a little bit different here. So you can see now I just have those three cameras popping up. You can see the results. They're going to be different every time. And now you can customize all these routines to do exactly what you'd like with the different cameras you have. So we've gone through, we've perfected these routines, at least for the most part. Things are going to be working for 99% of you really well. But there's a few of you out there who are going to experience very long delays when it comes to your cameras showing up in that multi view. The feed just might take a long time to come up. And that's why I have recommended certain cameras in the description below, because in my experience, they tend to be pretty good with Amazon's voice assistant and with features like this. But you could also have a few gaps with your Wi Fi. And I have a video that will give you a number of simple tips and tricks to improve your Wi Fi system in your home. So you can check that video because it's up on screen right there. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, live smart.